Hello everyone. I'm Deborah from Deborah Adele's Craft Room. Tonight we're going to paint a turkey on a gooseneck gourd. I've never done it before and I've been working on it for a couple of days already. So we'll see how it turns out when I'm done. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. These are the products that we'll be using for this project. They are Americana Acrylic Paints by DecoArt. The colors are Light Cinnamon, Ren Iron Oxide, Honey Brown, Light Avocado, Wasabi Green, Lamp Black, Golden Straw, Moon Yellow, and Light Buttermilk. This is the gourd that we're going to be using for tonight's project. I painted it with two coats of honey brown paint. The next thing I did was I made a beak and a waddle out of polymer clay. I baked it I baked it in the oven right on the gourd so there'd be a good seal when I glued this beak onto the face of the gourd. So the next thing I was going to do was figure out what size wings to paint on the gourd, but it turned out that there was a little problem with a gourd, so I had to come up with an alternate plan. My neighbor brought this gourd over to me. It was his son's from last Halloween. And he dropped in and saw I was painting gourds and went home and got this. Unfortunately, the back of it had a crack. A pretty big crack. And we really weren't able, we, we put some filler in and sanded and did it again. And there was a, a ridge because one side of the crack was higher than the other. Anyway, my husband did not like that mess on this side, but there's also a bed here, so we're gonna make it so that it sits on a mantle or against a wall, and this, this side of the gourd is going to be hidden against the wall. I had to come up with another plan. And I thought that <clears throat> well, maybe I could make the wings out of felt. So I made wings. I made two of them, going in opposite directions, of course, because otherwise that wouldn't work out. But what I did to do that was I cut out this little template and with the grayish brown color here. I put it on there this way and I cut it out. I put a line around with a marker and I cut it out. And then my next plan, well I did it twice, flipped it over, did it on this one, and then my next plan was to pin this to another piece of felt and just cut around a little wider. No, no template, just cut around a little bit wider and then do it again with the next color. Cut it around again and cut it around again. And then with the brown, that's the last one, the, this brown right here, Cut it again. This is all just regular felt. It's not uh, stiff felt. But then the last, the last layer in the back was a layer of stiff felt. It was this color. But when I stitched this brown onto this one here, it left a line of stitching in the back that when I put this on to the gourd, people were going to be able to see. So what I did was I cut another piece of felt 
a regular, regular felt, the same size as the stiff felt, and then I stitched along the edge of that so that there were no stitches showing on the back. I put an extra layer on, and this is quite thick, but it, I think it's going to work okay. We'll see. <laughs> and so anyway, I did the same thing to this. It took me since yesterday morning. I did sleep a little, but it took me since yesterday morning to get these two stitched up. Plus then I did a tail. So what I did was I took this piece of felt, which is the same color as the one on the wing. I took that piece of felt and folded it in half and then I cut out halfway around that shape. And then again, I set the big, the little one on top of another and went around wider. And then I did it again. And then I used, this color here is a piece of stiff felt. And I realized all these problems and decided I would do this, the back of this, on here before all that other stuff happened. So anyway, um, I took another one. I was going to make it two sides the same, but it's just too much. It's, it was too much sewing. So um, I left these two off and I just did two pieces back here, stitched the bottom all together. And so this brown on the farthest edge is stiff felt and everything else is regular felt. It's pretty good. It doesn't, you know, doesn't want to fall over. You hold it right here and it stands up straight. And these, they stand up straight. So that's how I did it. If you want to, you can buy fabric glue and glue them together. I didn't have any fabric glue and it cost so much I decided I wasn't going to go get any. And or you can uh, stitch it. Either way. Either way. But you do have to buy some stiff felt. I got mine on Amazon. So anyway, that's it. That's and I use this like okay, let me show you quickly. That's going to be that. And I decided how big to make the tail because the gourd was so big. If you have a little, say, spoon gourd or something, and you want to make a little tiny turkey, you know, it'll be a lot easier than this. But, uh, and then this, these wings, let me see which one goes where. This one go, was going to go here. I really think these are too big, but it's too late to change them. I have too much time invested in these already. And it'll look all right when I, you know, get them placed. I'll put the tail on first and then make sure there's a little space. So anyway, that's how I made the wings. If you have any questions, you can post them at the bottom of the video and I will answer them for you. Okay, so there we have it. So the first thing I'm gonna do now to get this gourd ready is to, I think I'm going to glue the, no I'm not going to glue the beak on yet. I'm going to just set it. Let me put the camera down. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the beak, put it in the place that you baked it, it popped right off after I got it out of the oven. It started to cool, cool and popped off. And but that wasn't a problem because because it'll go right back on. All right. So now, getting my pencil, getting my pencil here, and holding the beak in place, and making a couple of really big eyes. 
I'm starting to like those eyelid kind of eyes, so I think I'm going to do those for this. Very. I'm leaving a little space in between the eyes. I probably should have made a template for these because I won't know if they're the same size until after I paint them. Okay. All right. What the eyes look like. Again with a big gourd. Like the there we go. Okay, so there are the big eyes. Okay. Alright, so off comes the beak. We'll glue that after everything is painted. And the first thing we're gonna do paint the eyes black. Okay, so I forgot to leave this for the eyelid, so I'm going. I put a line across, and now I'm going to fill it in with wasabi green. I'm not sure if this wasabi green has been discontinued, but you can also use celery green. It's just a light, a light green, a little bit sagey. Going around the edges. I don't want to go up to the brown. I just want to stay inside of the black so that the eyes don't need to be lined up there. This wasabi looks pretty good. I would have used reindeer moss green but I understand it's been discontinued, so if you have it, you can go ahead and use it. But um, if you don't, then you know, pick another nice light green for this. need another coat for sure maybe two okay now what I'm gonna do there's not much painting on this gourd just the eyes and you know some blush on the cheeks and this little thing on the neck what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw some neck feathers or whatever they call them on a turkey I'm making some, you see that? Oh. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm adjusting these these feathers here. Okay, there we go. There are the feathers, the neck feathers. I'll turn it around so you can see the eyes. 
Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to touch up all those pencil marks. I'm going to do that with the uh, honey brown. Make sure you have a whole bottle of honey brown when you do this because it, taking my bottle's almost empty. And it took a lot of paint for this for this turkey. I'm starting to put the whites in the eyes now. I'm going to have the color that I choose go all the way to the bottom. So it'll be whiter, the angle of the white will be at the top. The wider part of the white will be at the top. Okay, I have the four sides of the eyes painted white, and the eyelids were coated three times. And now I'm going to draw in the pupils for the eyes, and and paint the green part. I have another color green that I'm going to be using for the irises of the eyes. So. You want us to get the pu pupils the same size if you can. Using light avocado for the irises. I'll show you how I'm doing this in just one second. Okay, for, for this, this eye here, I'm leaving it wide at the top and tapering it to nothing at the bottom. You'll see more when I finish the rest of this eye. Okay, I have that one eye done. Most of the bottom of this eye is going to be underneath the beak. So, we're not worrying about that too much right now. I'm going to do the other eye. I have the eyes painted green. The eyelids are wasabi. And this is light avocado. Of course, the pupils are done and I'm going to line the sides of the eyes the part up against the white okay there's one
Okay, I got those lined. Now I'm going to do the eyelashes and eyebrows. And a big eyelash. Now another one. I think I'm going to just do two. Okay. Now the eyebrows. Just one eyebrow. Okay. Eyebrows are finished. Not the same. I'm going to shade the eyelids with the same color as the eyes are, the light avocado. You should really do this before you put the eyelashes on, but you know, I always forget. Okay, there you go, shaded eyelids. And now we're going to shade the inside of the eyes with black. Okay, I'm going to put the little highlights in the eyes. Now we're going to line those neck feathers with black. It's going to be difficult up near the crook of the neck, so just do it any way you can. You have to touch up these neck feathers and then we're going to shade around these feathers okay I'm going to shade now I have some moon yellow and I'm going to shade on this side of the feathers on the outside of the feathers. And we get lighten up a little bit. Okay. I don't know how this is gonna look, and I might have to paint over it and do it again, but we'll see. Okay, now I'm going to shade the insides of the feathers. Okay, now I'm going to put some lines in here. Give it a, I don't know what kind of look, but It'll be something. I'll put that in between every every one of these. I think the painting is done on this. It's so simple.
except for maneuvering it around. When I made this beak, I just got a big piece of clay and I flattened it out and I made it so it had a hollow center so it would bake more evenly. And I built it right on the bird. So and then I painted it. I painted this uh, golden straw and this is I believe red iron oxide. So you could paint it red if you wanted but I like the fall colors on the turkey so I went with red iron oxide instead. Okay Anything that's flat, you put some glue on it. Okay. Using satin varnish for this turkey and I'm going to put the varnish where the tail feathers are going. This has been drying for a couple days so I mean not that you need to dry it for a couple days but you don't have to worry that it's still a little damp. Okay. The wings were way too big. So I'm cutting a couple layers off. And I'm just going to glue the whole thing down. They won't be sticking out anymore. Of course, if you have a gourd that doesn't have a problem like this gourd had, you could paint this design right on the gourd and save yourself a lot of trouble. Of course, the tail would have to be made out of something. Maybe something a little shiny. I don't know. I'm just going to go around the edges with the glue. Okay. And put it on the turkey. Ouch, burning myself. Ouch, ouch. Lay it right flat. I'm going to show you just one second. Okay. This is way better. The whole thing is laying flat. So it doesn't interfere with the tail at all. Much better. No, 
now I'm going to get the other one on there. Okay. I think I have to add a little bit of glue here to the tail. What do you think? Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Okay, it's going to need more varnish. And I'm good. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Part two of the turkey caper. I wasn't able to finish it last night. The feet that I put on broke. So I had to make new feet tonight and finish up a couple things. So I'm going to show you what I did. Okay. All right. All right. Now, yesterday when I was painting, I forgot to put the blush on. So I put the blush on since then. And I've polyurethaned it again. Painted the stem, took those terrible feet off that I hot glued on, and I put a little line around the mouth with a red iron oxide. It's a little raggedy. I found out that I got my new glasses today, and I found out that it's not my glasses that were bad, it's my painting. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is all ready to go. To put the feet on and we had to come up with another solution so my husband went out to the garage ouch that's hot my husband went out to the garage got this piece of wood and I painted it I, color, I covered the whole thing with avocado and then I put in, I pounced on with my brush, you know those brushes, wherever they are, um, pounced on light avocado all over and then I pounced on wasabi, even less. So it was three different layers, each a little less than the last one. And then I put a few pounces of red iron oxide. You could use burnt orange or pink or whatever color you'd like. And then I just got these out of the oven and they're hot. These are the toes that broke yesterday. So, and I made these new pieces here and just put those in. There's going to be some gluing. I got this piece right here and I pressed the turkey where I'm the way I'm going to stand it right into this spot and I intend to hot glue it onto this. I hope it works. Hi. Now, today is day 3 of the great turkey caper. Last night I tried to stand the gourd up and it did not work out so now I have this board which I worked on yesterday but I did some touching up to today I'm going to put the camera down so you can see it this is a 2 by 8 board I think and the broken feet that I had for the other one this is the toe middle toe of those broken feet I used them again and I bent another piece of clay and made them into turkey feet like that I baked the whole thing in the oven with these flat and then I popped them off and painted them 
and glued them back down. Now we have here a hole because I tried to stick it down to a flat surface, which don't even try it because it was a nightmare because it wouldn't stay no matter what. I used glue, with, uh, hot glue, and it just didn't matter. So now I'm. this is my final attempt. If I don't get this right now, I'm going to sell this turkey on eBay for 12 cents. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so anyway. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put the camera up a little. Okay. All right. And see if the glue is hot enough yet. Okay. And it is. Here's the turkey. Move everything out of the way. that this is going to work. Okay. Putting the glue around the edge of this hole up onto the edge so that it Gotta hurry because I don't want the stuff to dry. Okay. Okay, the turkey is standing up on the board. Seems like it's going to stay. If you make one of these, be careful to keep the head straight because I had to take this off because the head was leaning forward, which is not, you know, what I wanted. So anyway, here you go. I'm going to have to put a little something around the turkey's face because some of the hot glue squeezed out. And realizing I just didn't really have a plan for this. So, anyway, use a little glue here. And go. The turkey is done. Now if you stand it up against the wall, this is how it's going to look at you. Turn it a little bit maybe. Depends on how big the area is that you're going to stand it on. But anyway, there you go. A turkey, finally. <laughs> Only three days. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. I don't even know if there's a bell. Somebody says there's not a bell. But if there's a bell, click on it so that you get notified of future videos. Thank you again. Thank you so much for your interest in my gourds. Bye-bye now.